Hey crew, I've got the key to that Ford Ranger Raptor. And today we're gonna see what it's like to live with, starting with remote start. Good morning, neighbors. Yes, the three inch catback exhaust does pulse the air a little bit on startup, but then the idle is extremely modest, certainly by comparison to the bigger F-150 Raptor and definitely compared to the Raptor R. Now checking out spacing in my driveway, which is 16 feet wide by 19 and a half feet long. I've got the Ranger parked just a couple inches in from the edge, sitting next to a Mitsubishi Outlander that my wife is reviewing. If you want to check out her content, it's at Mobile Mama on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. She's got that one parked with the front tire actually hovering over the edge. And with that parking spacing, we've got plenty of room to walk between the vehicles and wheel a double stroller or wagon through for our kiddos. The front of the Ranger Raptor is hovering just a little over the front of the driveway. And at the back of the truck, that leaves ample room between it and the garage door, though not enough space to walk in front of the hedge to access my front door. And so even though the Raptor version of the Ranger is three inches wider at the track, it's still so much easier to park as a mid-size pickup compared to the full-size F-150 Raptor. Hopping inside with the key fob in my pocket, I put my hand on that door handle, it will unlock the doors. That's one defined notch of door opening, but I can actually swing the door all the way out and it still won't touch the Outlander. Hopping in, there is this metal side step to ease my entry, but no grab handle. So I just use the steering wheel to guide myself over. There we are. Hello, cabin crew. Thanks for joining for this day in the life in a Ford Ranger Raptor. Now in this video, I wanna see what advantages or possibly disadvantages there might be to living with a mid-size off-road pickup compared to a full-size off-road pickup. And of course, as I say that, the remote start is just timed out. So let me start it up again manually. Graphics and chimes come on doing their thing. And then the infotainment graphics as well. Now, first, let me show you where I've stashed the items I brought with me, including my smartphone. That's on the wireless charging pad. Inside the console, I've got my wallet and a granola bar on the top tray. And then underneath that, I've got my GoPro accessories, which are not small, so that's a pretty good sized console there. And then over here, I have my big bottle in the door pocket. So it is a large door pocket to accommodate that. And then up top, I've got my sunglasses in their little tray that is padded. And so while the cabin storage may not be as cavernous as a full size pickup truck, you still have little cubbies all over the place and plenty of room for everything I would bring on a daily basis. And speaking of things I still have in the vehicle that I don't need and that my wife will need, I'm gonna take out that car seat before we get out of here. Built it up and ready to go. I now have to interact with this gear selector. And I say have to on purpose because this is neither the most initially intuitive nor the most precise gear selection device I've ever used. For one, Typically with selectors of this shape, the release of the movement of the gear selector, so it doesn't accidentally move into place, is on the side, but in the Ranger Raptor, that's the manual mode. So it's actually up here that you release it. But then the way you move it is very loosely. Like feeling out each gear selection requires a, a great deal of fidelity. So I find that it's easy to go back into drive from park, that's just all the way back. But if I'm going from park to reverse, I can easily go past it into neutral by accident or going from drive to reverse, I can all the way go into park by accident. You just have to be so careful and you don't always have the time to be super careful in life. Sometimes you just need to go and the Ranger doesn't want to let you. I'm going to go now. And surprise, surprise, we have no problem with the clearance of the gutter in front of my driveway. And the turning radius is actually good enough to clear the trash cans on trash day. My day is gonna begin with a cup of coffee here from the Lost Bean. And that's gonna mean that I'm parking the Ranger Raptor once again, but here with some defined spacing. So I'm gonna go into reverse slowly carefully there we are that brings up the high-res backup camera system with trajectory lines and a bird's eye view and backing it in is such a piece of cake all right got my decaf latte here yes a drink decaf coffee and while there are clear disadvantages to drinking a non-caffeinated coffee namely just that it doesn't 
taste is good. Um, I don't think the advantages are spoken about nearly as often, and that is that while it is a rhythm of my life to have coffee in the morning, it isn't a requirement. So I am still functional if I don't get this until, well, the next day. Whereas many of my friends, if they don't have their caffeine coffee in the morning, they're useless members of society. And it, hold on. My correspondent has just informed me this is still a car video, so let me get back to that. Around towning in the Ranger Raptor. There are all these drive modes here, and I've got it locked in normal to start. So the throttle response is neither overly touchy nor too lazy. There's hardly any discernible lag from this twin turbo V6, and you've got 405 horsepower to use. The turn signal I like the action of the stock operation and the signal sound. It's a gentle, unobtrusive knocking noise. And it touched on the turning radius briefly exiting my driveway, but here in a full U-turn setting. That's excellent. Now it is a mid-size, not a full-size pickup truck, so I didn't expect it to be huge, but compared to the Toyota Tacoma I just drove recently, that turned around much, much tighter. But now let's say someone cuts me off in this Ranger Raptor and I need to let them know about their mistake. Woo! One, that was a touchy horn. I barely put any pressure on it. And two, wow, that's very loud. That'll wake you up, if not them. On the chillier mornings, I'm thankful for the seat heating and the heated steering wheel. Though that's not the only reason I enjoy holding onto this wheel. It's just a great design. It's got these grooves at nine and three to grip into. The leather is soft and it's got perforations. It's kind of squishy too, just pleasing to me for some reason. And also the effort required to turn the wheel is more so than a standard Ranger and that makes it feel sportier for sure, but also I get a better sense of how those tires are turning, even at low speeds like this. The heavy duty Fox suspension and the BF Goodrich KO2 33 inch all terrain tires are obviously designed for off roading performance, but on road they also benefit the ride quality and comfort. They just absorb these defects in the road easily and the seats are so cushy as well bolstered heavily yes but not squeezing me look at this i'm gonna go over a pothole and i hear it but i barely felt it and it's not a busy ride either even with the solid axle at the back the range of seat and steering wheel adjustments is also excellent for all body types i'm at six feet tall i've got a whole lot of room even still above my head the only dynamic issue I have with this Ranger Raptor is the feel of the brakes. I go to that pedal and it's it's like a sponge. I just have to believe I'm going to stop, and I will with enough room. There's also a lot of nosedive when I do that. It doesn't make you feel very confident in the braking. Oh, coffee's done, which means I can get moving here and turn my attention to the utility of this mid-size pickup truck with a bike ride. All right, it's time to get loaded up. And this is one difference between the smaller Ranger and the larger F-150, because in the past, I've been able to get my entire bike without even removing the front tire in the F-150's cab. But in the Ranger, well, for one, under the seats, there's this defined hump that gets in the way. And two, just the cab itself is smaller than an F-150. So that means it's gonna have to go in the bed. It is a five foot bed, smaller than an F-150's bed, but that's not actually a problem because the bike would still be leaning over the edge of the tailgate. And in fact, it's easier in the lower range Raptor compared to the taller F-150 Raptor. So let me get the patented yoga mat in place here to protect the tailgate. Not as difficult of a lift to get it up and over and secured in place. This is probably a good time to talk about visibility out of this Ranger Raptor when I've got a bike occupying some of my rear view. First, the view out the front. Because the hood is slightly downturned, I can see the road in front of me easy enough and the windshield is nice and tall. The door mirrors are also oversized and I appreciate that. And the side glass is tall enough as well. There is a bit of a blind spot at the C-pillar, but there is standard blind spot monitoring. 
The view out the back is probably the most constrained because the glass isn't all that tall. I do have a backup camera that I can pull up at any time, even in motion, so that gives me the clear view out the back, along with a hitch view if I was towing, and a rear tire angle view. But what I don't have is a bed camera. I really appreciate that in the F-150 Raptor to monitor what's going on in the bed. Here I can just kind of see that my tire is still there, still wiggling, so the bike hasn't dislodged itself. It's just about time for my ride now, but ahead of it, I want to do a warm up in the Ranger Raptor with a real world zero to 60 test. I've got my race box set up here to record. I'm going to move into the sport powertrain mode and I'll make the shift to four drive high. And when that's done, I will brake boost it off the line, pin my foot, let it go, and we're off to the races. 60 arrives in 5.78 seconds. Shoot, it scoots. Oh, and the bike's still there. All right, it's time to have some exercise of my own. Oh, that was good. But now I can think of someone else or something else. They can also use a little bit of exercise. Obi, do you want to go to the dog park? Yes? Okay, just wait a sec, because the seats have leather on them and I, I don't want you to scratch that up. So I'm going to lay out this blanket first to protect those. That looks better. Okay, Obi, your chariot awaits. And he took off the blanket. Oh, you lovable and tremendously clumsy dog. Are you comfortable, Obi? Oh, I have an idea. Check it out. Window. Now you can appreciate the great outdoors. If I may speak for Obi, I think he would say that while he's making do with the rear accommodations, destroying them, I mean, he would prefer if the seat bottoms could be lifted up and there would just be a flat floor underneath. He just loves to stand. He doesn't like sitting. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We're gonna go have some fun. So fast, so fast. Today I'm taking the Ranger Raptor off road, but to get there, I'll be on the highway for a while, which gives me a chance to talk about things like cabin volume. So let me quiet up briefly and we'll listen in. Okay, so yes, I get some wind noise. I hear a little hum from those all terrains, but it's not bad at all. And I can make the light drone of that exhaust even quieter by going to the quiet exhaust mode. And now it completely fades to the background. And if I wanted less of the outside noise, I could use the wireless Apple CarPlay system to find some tunes and listen in. Oh, I like that system. The bass was absolutely thumping. The notes were clear. This type of quality audio system found in a mid-sized pickup truck. Go figure. Now let's get into the driving assistance feature. So as standard, the Ranger Raptor has adaptive cruise control and a lane keep assist that becomes lane centering assist when it finds those lane markings. And I can just show you how it's working here. Me not having to touch the wheel just as a demonstration now wanting me to check back in, but watch on this curve, it follows the lines to keep the truck centered. And if it is being used properly as a hands-on system, this is really going to reduce the driving fatigue for long distance journeys, which you'll probably want to take because again, it's not that loud. And as I mentioned briefly before, these seats are so darn comfortable that it doesn't matter how long I'm in them, 
I still feel great. Okay, the tires have found some dirt and that means it's time to play. But first, let's look at the modes we have. So for the transfer case settings, we of course have two drive high, four high and four low, but the Raptor adds a four auto mode. What that is, is rear wheel drive, unless there's slip detected, then it automatically switches over to four wheel drive. There also are three new drive modes in the Raptor. We've got off-road, a Baja mode, and a rock crawl mode. For these conditions, let's leave it in the off-road mode and that will automatically put us into four wheel drive high. And away we go. It also perks up that throttle response and instantly the truck feels tailor-made for these conditions. The extra track width and the front roll bar provide this sense of stability. The Fox two and a half inch live valve variable compression suspension soaks up the blemishes. Oh man, what a fun machine. The four wheel drive system also gets the power through to the all-terrain tires really well. And there is plenty of power, let's be clear. 405 horses. Ample for having fun. And I love the narrower dimensions compared to the F-150 Raptor. I feel like I've got all this margin on these trails that I just didn't when I took the F-150 Raptor to the same spot. It's got room to slide and stay safe. And that's not just beneficial when you're going fast on a trail. When it comes to brush entering the sides of the trail, here I can power fold in the door mirrors. The Ranger Raptor's mid-sized body just maneuvers through without you ever worrying about scraping. No more pinstripes for you. You can breathe easy. Now I'm gonna try out the Baja mode. So I'll rotate the dial over here, get into Baja, and that is going to perk everything up even more along with turning off the traction control system for slide. And you can operate Baja in both rear drive and four wheel drive. I'm gonna keep it in four drive for right now. And straight away, I noticed that the traction control system is now not cutting the power where it was in the off-road mode. So I'm freed up to let the truck slide around. While all the inherent stability that I noted initially encourages me to keep my foot in it. Yeah! Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. There are trucks that are off-road capable, and then trucks like the Ranger Raptor, which are off-road bred. <laughs> but the fun extends beyond just high-speed antics off-road because the Ranger Raptor has both the clearance and the kit for crawling. So I'm now gonna switch into the rock crawl mode all the way over to the right. And then for that to actually happen, I need to go into neutral. Carefully. Once the shift is done, I can go back into drive and carry on forward. Now just being able to feather the throttle and easily mosey up this steep incline. I can monitor where my tires are tracking with the camera system. And I can see that the rear differential has been locked in this rock crawl mode there's also a front locking differential should I need that. 
I don't feel like I need it at all right now. This is just so easy. The only thing clearance wise that gives me a little bit of pause are those metal side steps hanging a bit low. I prefer rock sliders for these activities, but I don't hear them touching the ground at all. I do hear that parking system. You turn those sensors off. No slip. Just creep on up just over this crest, not being able to see. I reference the camera system, make sure we're not gonna go off a cliff. We're good. Now for the steeper descent. I can, of course, just be careful with how I'm modulating the brake pedal to not initiate a slide. Or if I'm uncertain, I can use the off-road cruise control system. They just call it trail control. And you can set your speed in half mile per hour increments, taking my foot off the throttle and brake. I can cruise down this hill. Or if I was facing upwards, I could cruise up it. The benefit to this being that I just have to worry about steering input and nothing else. There really isn't more I could ask of this truck. To be able to load up the family and all our camping gear and get to any campsite we want or have a couple buddies come along with me and have a blast off road. The Ranger Raptor will just have you addicted to days spent in the dirt. At least until you run out of fuel, which I'm getting close to right here. So I'm going to hop into this fuel station, and this is a good time to talk about fuel economy. The EPA rates the Ranger Raptor at 16 MPG in the city, 18 on the highway, and 17 combined. Now, if I saw that 17 combined, then with this 20.3 gallon tank, I'd have 345 miles to use. Unfortunately, I've been seeing 13.3 miles per gallon. And at current fuel prices of $5.17 for 91 octane fuel that the Ranger Raptor requires, it's gonna cost me a little over a hundred bucks to fill this tank. Ooh, capless fueling. Were you up there in the road? Yeah, I was. How is it? It's great. It's really yeah, cool. Nice yeah, man, you too. Ah, oh, the truck looks so good, dirty. But I am supposed to have lunch with Mobile Mama, so I should probably clean it off a little bit before then. So I'm going to do something the full-size F-150 Raptor cannot do. Go into an automatic car wash. And it's not just the overhead clearance I'd have to worry about. Because the F-150 Raptor's 315 section tires don't fit on the car wash tracks, but the Ranger Raptor's 285s do. Welcome, Mobile Mama. Hi. Oh, did you, was there a downpour in a highly localized area? Just yeah, over our your kids head? just shot me with water. They did? <laughs> I told them not to do that I anymore. did a workout and oh. then I showered and you said, we have to go. There's no time to dry your hair. Yeah, because we got to get to our lunch spot before it closes at two. So mm -hmm. I'm hurrying you along. I know. You're here in I'm the there. Ranger Raptor. Yes. And what do you think of it? About the interior? I would guess that's all you have access to right now, not yeah. having driven it. Yeah, the interior. Uh, I like it. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of full-size pickups, so this feels a little small for me. Yeah, you're a little, like, I yes. can touch your elbow. Whereas, like, the F-150 would be like, oh, i got to swim yeah, over to touch you. and I you. like that. I want to swim, you mean in, you don't swim wanna, in space. You don't want to touch my elbow? Not, not really when you have that thing. Oh, oh hey, oh, ow! Gosh. Still here. <laughs> here I like the suede and these leather seats. This is all nice. The nice seats to are the really touch. comfortable, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I hate the shifter. Oh, yeah. Oh. Thank you. I hate it the shifter. It is so not good. No. Um, the orange and red accents are nice, mm. uh, but this it doesn't scream Raptor inside. Like, like it's not enough. Like it says this Raptor just says here. Raptor. That's it, right? Yeah. And all the seats. Yeah, but yeah. it needs, I think, I agree. It needs a little needs more a little color, more a little more excitement. Pizzazz. But then again, the exterior in this velocity blue is so loud, maybe you don't need anything more on the inside. Wow. Maybe the inside is your safe space. Ride's nice though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really comfortable. Yeah, I mean, right. would, okay, here's a question. Okay. Does it have that like cool factor of a big Raptor? It's middle? not in your face, so it's a little more toned down. It's a conservative Raptor. Mm. But is that also equating to not as cool? It's not as cool. It's not as cool. Still cool. Not as cool. Not as cool. You know cool. what's cool? Delicious soba noodles. Ooh. That's what we're gonna have right now at Tandakaya. Oh, the aroma of the soba noodles and chicken curry. It's tantalizing. Stop. What do you think? 
<laughs> not your strain. Yeah, okay. And I want to eat. Oh, right, so I should stop <laughs> filming. No, film, stop good. filming and eat. Okay, fair. Oh, that food. It was almost as good. <laughs> not as I remember. It was actually better. It was almost as good as our conversation. Really just so fulfilling. Um, was it? And stimulating. <laughs> what was it about? <laughs> I think the food might have been better. Food might have been better. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you can be dismissed from conversational awkwardness after what? I get your help with one more thing. Ah, oh, car seats. How'd you know? It happens every video. Saturday. In, in the, the park, park. the 4th of, of July. July. <laughs> what does it say right there? I don't know. All right, what do we got for our car seats? You have two sets of lower latch anchors yep. on the outboard seats, and then you have your three tethers. Oh. But the whole seat flips down. It does. And you have your tethers down here. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to tighten them. Well, find let's out. find out. Are you okay? Let's. I am. Yeah, let's debrief that for a sec. That You're a little I had to work sweaty. I had to work really hard, really <laughs> hard just to get the seat back to latch again after I had done the tether because well, for one, getting my hands in there and then cinching the tether was difficult. Yeah. I was glad the headrest could raise. That was acceptable. But then getting the seat back latched once again, I had to shove it with all my strength mm -hmm. to get it to relatch. It was mm -hmm. crazy. And then I had to wait for you so I could do this. Yeah, because you couldn't do them in because tandem. Because you can't do it because the no. whole seat folds. Okay, was so this more difficult than the Tacoma? To the Tacoma? Um, it was tighter in the Tacoma, but I Yeah, the Tacoma didn't have as much room, so that made it harder. Yeah, okay, but then let's look at the space we have, great? Right? Okay. So just go sit in your seating position. I didn't move my seat at all. And my daughter would have leg room back there, so I we know I, I feel my great. Seat, and it's but you still have knee room. Yeah, it's fine. And the back angle is still good. Yeah. Hey, this can work, and that is the rear-facing car it's seat, good. so that's the tighter side. So this can be family, family approved. approved. And there's one last thing I need to do to properly compare this mid-size pickup truck. To a full-size model because slinging a bicycle over the tailgate isn't really a proper test of the bed's utility so i'm going to pick up a king-size mattress from costco to see how that fits in this shorter narrower mid-size bed well today was a day of first it was my first time using the full aisle whip at costco and it's my first time parking a mattress I think I did quite well. And with a little help from the Costco cart crew, I've got the king size bed in the Ranger bed. Mostly, there's just about a foot and a half of overhang. We can work with this. I just need to tie it down now and make it home. Okay, bed is secure and here's my verdict on that tie down process. There were plenty of tie down points inside the bed. I appreciated that. And once again, I also appreciated that the bed height of the Ranger Raptor is lower than something like the F-150 Raptor. What I was missing out on is a bed step. You cannot get one in the Ranger Raptor because of the positioning of the exhaust system in this truck. I was able to use the side step for some access points and I put my foot on top of the tire as well. But one more place to step up that wasn't the tailgate would have been really nice. All in all, not a problem at all. And what family man Costco trip would be complete without also purchasing some diapers. And in case you're curious, there is the same level of satisfaction as a full-size pickup truck when driving with something oversized in your truck bed. I'm doing it. Well, crew, at the beginning of this video, I pondered in what ways a mid-size performance off-road pickup truck was better or worse to live with than a full-size one. And after spending quality time running errands, enjoying hobbies, and playing in the dirt, I can think of several ways it's easier to daily. Whether parking or maneuvering on trails, the Ranger Raptor's smaller footprint is much more livable than the bigger F-150 Raptor. It's also got the cabin space, all-around capability, and comforts to satisfy most truck buyers. Alas, a full-size truck can still tow more. It can fit more in the cab or bed. It's more accommodating to families and isn't all that much thirstier while also gaining a larger fuel tank. Yet for the money and maneuverability, the Ranger Raptor's few shortcomings are worth overlooking. I hope you guys have enjoyed this day in the life and I will see you again next time.